Hello, this is LEGO Wizard, and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 Programmer app. So this app is available in the App Store if you just type in LEGO Mindstorms EV3 Programmer, it should come up pretty easy. And it's to replace the computer version of the app by the same name, which lets you to control what your robot does and how it moves around in a very specific pattern. The Commander app that I've shown before, that one gives you a built-in sort of uh, joystick to control it with. But this one is, to, it's especially useful if you want to create your own ones, because it can set up specific movements for all the motors to do. So, to show you what I mean, uh, I'm just going to show you by uh, just a general layout of how the page looks. When you open it up, you'll see this with the five main creations here. And you can tap on any of these, and it'll show you different mission builds you can do. So these are, it'll first show you a video. So for example, Lightning Tail, let's just do this. So, and that shows you how that feature works. So then what you can do is, once you think that you want to try and doing that, you put, click Start Mission. You can first build it if you don't already have Spiker ready, and then you can program it. So either you can try to, uh, you should try and guess what, it, what you have to do using uh, the video, or you can just open the finished program straight away. Let's quickly get out of this again. Or you can open the finished program straight away. And now it shows it gives you a few notes and it also shows you exactly what you need to do. So while we're here, we might as well start by showing you how to program. So uh, the basic controls are down here at the bottom. So as you can see, there are about seven basic green icons down here at the bottom, and these control the basic movements of it, without any other fancy uh, time controls or anything. These are just the basic ones that tell your robot what to do. So, the first one out here on the edge, this is a media motor. This controls that sort of smallish motor that kind of looks like that on the actual Mindstorms. So this motor can be used, uh, this button can be used to control that motor. So, I'm just going to quickly clear up all this and I'll just get back to the video. For it. Oh yes, and of course, if you want to just delete one, just tap the, uh, the the green at the top. It'll come up with cut, copy, or delete. Just press delete. And then it's all gone. Alright. So you put this at start, and it'll show you some different options you can do. First of all, you can control the port. So the port's this little A button, and it'll just show you which port on the Mindstorms machine uh, it corresponds to. So which one you've plugged it into, just to help if you've got different wiring on it. Then the next one, this controls uh, how it turns, or, or, like, or for how long. So the first one is off, just to turn it off completely. On, so if you want to just get it spinning randomly for as long as you want. On for seconds, so you can control how many specific seconds you want it to run for. And then degrees, how many degrees, and rotations, how many times you want it to rotate. This one here, controls the power, so how much power the motor has when controlling it. All these positive numbers tell it to go in one direction, which I think is right, but then if you want to change the direction, you can actually go into the negative numbers. So that's how you control if you want it to go left or right, the motor. And this one is break it end. It doesn't really do much if you're just doing basic programming of where you want it to move, but you can either press true or false. The other motors, like large motor, it's the same deal, except it's just very slight differences, but but relatively it's just the same thing, except a different type of motor. The third one, the third button, as you can see, is called move steering. This is if you have two motors linked up in sort of car kind of pattern. This can this is a more advanced feature, especially if you were trying to make high performance cars. It helps you to make easier steering. So it'll first tell you how you want it to steer. Which direction? You can even do it, make it do a full loop if you want it to. So it's really useful for that. Power again if you want it to go left or right, and how much of it you want. This is for seconds, rotations, or however you want to count that measurement by and break and end. And of course the ports because it's two different motors. You just choose both the ports. Uh, brake steering is or move tank is to. A uh, similar thing, except it's just for, um, the, like, if you want to give it a certain powers instead of steering, just, uh, so, it's, so steering is 
both the motors turn, but then it counteracts each other, so that way it moves more fluently. This is more if you have, like, again, tanks. Uh, again, it's just a more complex version of this, which I'm not going to get too much too much detail in this video. This one is display. It's really what's on the actual screen of the brick. If you want, you can change um, the different what what's on there. You can just reset it to the default, which is just Mindstorms and the little symbol. Uh, text, so you can type in either grid or pixels. I only do pixels to give us higher quality. And then you can literally just type in whatever you want. So it's pretty useful if you want to put a, like a message on it, like maybe thanks for watching or watch out or something. So it can be useful for that. Uh, otherwise, grid, it's just a bit of a lower resolution of that same thing. Shapes doesn't give you many shapes to choose from, and I'm not quite sure what you do with it, but if you want, you can just give it a circle. And it'll give you different ones, like if you want it to be in color, if you want it to be, you know, actually like have color, you, like the radius of the circle, the y and x coordinates, and everything like that. So the shapes are a bit more advanced, like if you do want a shape on it, but they're quite simple. With image, you can actually cl click this and it'll give you different images that are already loaded on the system. So Lego ones, so different ones from the Mindstorms that already exist. Eyes are pretty pretty useful. They can give you some really unique expressions. Looks great. And then there's other ones like expressions, so teeth and different emoji expressions. Objects, progress and system. All other ones. And then you can also change, you know, clear screen at the end. And of course, x y coordinates. This one is pretty useful. It's for sound. the The brick can actually uh, emit certain sounds. Like if when you load it up, you can hear the sound coming out. But you can actually play specific sounds. So you can either tell it to stop. You can play a file. Click this, and it'll give you heaps of different ones: numbers, system movements, mechanical. A lot of really useful ones. Communication is probably the most useful. It gives different voices and. Yes, thank you, and, you know, really useful ones. Uh, the other ones are, like, mechanical, just for random, like, if a mode is moving and you want to have a noise playing with that. And then, of course, a bunch of other ones, which are just useful in certain scenarios. Besides that, there's also notes. Now, these give you actual piano notes you can play, which is pretty useful if you want to try and be a elite pianist on some kind of amazing song. But the problem is, when you do play piano notes, it the pitch is quite high. It's it's really high pitched, and it kind of does hurt your ears if you put it on high volume. So as it also tells you how long the note plays for, and uh, what play, like how long you want it to play for. Besides that, there's also uh, record sound. You, you can actually record your own voice, which is awesome. Maybe one time I could get it to record a, the channel intro. This one, the last one in this category, is for uh, different lights. So on the display on the buttons, it'll tell you if it's green, orange, or red. And then this one is if you want it to flash green, orange, or red. Okay, so the yellow category. This category has different timed ones. So obviously there's yellow, which is to start it. Uh, this, uh, this, this one the, with the watch glass is for telling it if you want it to move at it when something happens. So let's say you, uh, you have this set up to a motor. You can use this to say, okay, when I want this motor to start, when the touch sensor goes off. So it'll compare the touch sensor in a certain state, and then you can actually click what state. So you can have it when the touch sensor is released, when it's bumped, or when it's suppressed. And this goes for all of them. Infrared, gyro, and it can be really useful if you're trying to do uh, very complex, you know, different types of back and forth movements between the robot. This one is for a loop. So if you want to copy a certain section uh, more times, than the, the, like more than once, you can actually put this in a loop and it'll tell you uh, when you want it to activate or if you want it to be counted a certain number of times. Like if say you want to repeat it like maybe three times. So it can be pretty useful for repeating different sections or if you have an algorithm that you want to happen every single time you do something, it can be pretty useful for that. The switch. Now the switch is for if something happens, you can actually uh, switch it to a certain an another category. So let's say if a, if the gyro sensor goes off, then it'll start doing a different set of movements rather than the one it was doing, which can be useful for again a more ex like uh, extreme and more complex arrangements. And I think that's about everything. That's about all the basic buttons you need to know to program it. 
these are just common boxes that you can put down if you need to uh, explain something to the person using it. But besides that, there's not much else. Uh, this button is to connect it to the Bluetooth brick. It'll just tell you you need to connect it. And normally you'll have a download button here and then a play button. And down here it just shows you where all the ports are connected to when you have the EV3 brick in. And besides that, that's about all you need to know for how to use it. The second page, also, has fan creations. I'd love to try some of these out one day. They look epic. A lot of them from familiar movie franchises or things. So, yeah, I'd love to try those out one day. But for now, this is LEGO Wizard. Have a nice day.